Hey guys, it's Mark with Got Duckless, and today we're in our new Duckless Mini Split Studio, and we're off to the races. Our topic today is going to be whether or not you can install an indoor unit on an interior wall. It's a common thing for an indoor unit to be installed on an exterior, but we've had a lot of people ask us whether it's possible to install it on an interior wall. So we'll cover that, whether it's possible, and some of the considerations to think about before installing your indoor unit on an interior wall. So let's get started. So the first thing we have to do is we have to answer whether it's possible to install an indoor unit on an interior wall. And the simple answer is yes, it's actually more common than you might think. The second thing that we need to think about is um, what are some of the reasons you would install an indoor unit on an interior wall. And there are a few pretty common reasons. One is that there just aren't any exterior walls to begin with in the room that you're trying to install it in. Um, so you have to install it on an interior wall and then run it to a place where there is an exterior wall. A second a reason is that there's too many windows in a room, like a sunroom, for example, or um, let's just say it's just a lot, of, uh, a lot of windows. You might have to run it up to an attic and over uh, through, a, through a soffit or something along those lines. Um, and so uh, another reason is um, whether it's uh, the room is facing the front of the house and you don't want to drill through the uh, exterior wall to get to that front. You might run it through an interior wall and then to the exterior on uh, the side of the house. These are all really good reasons to install uh, mini split indoor units on the interior. So now we have to think about what are some of the considerations we need to think about before actually installing these units. So let's jump into that. The first consideration that you should think about before installing your indoor unit on an interior wall is how and where you're gonna run your line set. Your indoor unit is not gonna run by itself. It needs the outdoor unit to be functional and the way that you connect the two is by the line set. It's typically consisting of two refrigerant lines, a control wire, and condensate hose. So if you're remodeling your house and you already have the drywall off the wall, it's pretty typical to run that line set as a whole through the wall and then to the exterior wall or down to the basement and then closer to the outdoor unit. Um, but yeah, running it through the interior wall is definitely very common. Um, the other way is if you're not remodeling your house and let's say you just have a, an old house and you're trying to retrofit this duckless system into your house without having to do more work than needed, you can definitely run the line set on the exterior of the drywall uh, and then cover it with a line set cover that looks cosmetically pleasing. Now, when you do that, it's beneficial, of course, to install the indoor unit closer to the exterior wall so you use less of that line set cover. But if, you, if your only choice is to uh, install it in the center of the room, the line set cover will help with the aesthetic. The second thing to consider is what to do with condensate. You have to run a condensate line in the line set because in the summer months or whenever you're going to run your system on cooling, it's going to condensate. And that's because it's pulling humidity from the room. Now, regardless of whether you install your line sets in the wall or outside of the wall, what you do have to consider is gravity slope. Your refrigerant lines and your control wire don't necessarily need to have uh, gravity slope because it's not carrying material that's sensitive to that. It can go up, down, sideways. It doesn't matter as long as it's not uh, excessive amount of terms um, for the compressor's sake. But for condensate, it does matter. Of course, water runs downhill. So if you don't want to use a pump, you need to consider whether or not your line set run is going to have consistent slope to wherever it's going, whether it's the exterior or to some form of code compliant drain. Um, so if you don't have that option, if you're in a room uh, that doesn't have any exterior walls and the only way to go is up into the attic, then you have to consider using a condensate pump. It's not the end of the world. There are uh, options for condensate pumps that are somewhat quiet as well as reliable, but it's always best to 
run the line set without the pump because it's just one less mechanical thing you have to worry about. Now we know that we need to run the condensate and sometimes we might need to use a pump or we might not. But something to note is where your uh, condensate is going to end up. A lot of people run the condensate to the exterior and they direct it either to a gutter or some people are creative and they put it right to their garden because their flowers and uh, plants need water as well. Um, but it is strategic to run it outside so it's completely out of your house. But if you do not want to, or if there's limitations that restrict you from running your condensate line to the exterior, you can always run it into a code compliant drain. So what, does, what do I mean by a code compliant drain? Well, each state and each county might have their own codes regarding where to dispose of gray water or condensate in this, uh, in this case. So you just wanna make sure you're abiding by the codes of your, of your um, place of residence, whether you can dump that condensate into a sump pump or into uh, some form of other drain. The third thing to consider when installing your indoor unit on an interior wall is you wanna make sure that you have access to line set connections for the future. So if you're burying your line set in the walls and you're making the connections in the wall, you want to indicate where those connections are gonna be for the future. If you ever have a leak, whether that's a refrigerant leak or a condensate leak, you don't want to bury your, uh, your line sets without knowing where they are. So in the future, if a technician is trying to diagnose what's going on, you're not getting charged um, out the wazoo because they have no idea where to start looking. So whether that's putting in access panels or uh, indicating in some way where those connections are, it'll save you and any technician in the future of any headaches. So in this video, we answered that you can install an indoor unit on an interior wall. However, there are some considerations that you should think about before doing so. The first thing that we talked about is how to run that line set run from the indoor to the outdoor. You wanna make sure that it's done um, professionally, whether it's in the wall or outside the wall, you wanna make sure it looks aesthetically pleasing. Um, and so if you do end up running it, just think strategically of how to do so. The second consideration is that you make sure the condensate is run strategically, whether you have slope and you're running it to the exterior, or if you don't have that option of choosing the best condensate pump that you can, uh, whether you prioritize uh, durability or just uh, the quiet operation of it, um, that you think ahead of that and you do it well for future peace. And the third is to make sure you have access to those connection points so that in the future, if you have any leaks, you don't have to wonder where those connections are and it's easier for everyone. I hope we uh, answered some of those questions whether you install or whether you can install an indoor unit on an interior wall and we hope you take these considerations into effect. Now, there are many other considerations, all dependent on the project that you're working on. Every home is different, every uh, commercial space is different, so feel free to reach out to us at Got Duckless. We have for over 40 years of experience installing mini splits, and so we're here to help. We're here to give you guidance, um, tell you to do this or to do that, and provide any condensate pump uh, recommendations. So feel free to reach out to us, whether it's calling us, chatting us, emailing us, and we're here to help. If you like what you're seeing with these videos, please subscribe and like our videos so we can continue making great content for you about mini splits. As always, thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.